Hi everybody, it is Carolina here from the Oak Bluffs Public Library and it's time for Cooking with Carolina Live. So tonight we are making a recipe from Real Meeple, Meeple, <laughs> Real Meal Revolution. All right, The Radical Sustainable Approach to Healthy Eating by Professor Tim Noakes, Jono Proudfoot, and Sally Ann Creed. So I'm not sure if anybody's ever looked at this cookbook before. It is available through the Clams library system. You could put it on hold to have it after I do. But it's a very funny cookbook. It is European. So it's from, it was published by Little Brown in the UK. So one of the things we're up against is that all the recipes are, well, the funniest part of it is the recipes are in European in metric measurements, which gets a little complicated, but then they also use American measurements, the standard measurements with tablespoons. So it's a combination of tablespoons and grams. And so it's a little bit to figure out, but I think we'll do just fine. So the recipe that we're making tonight is baked salmon with lemon, bacon, and tomato. And I'd like to thank the Library Friends of Oak Bluffs for sponsoring the program and for allowing me to get all the ingredients that I need. This recipe serves four. Here's a picture of it. Ooh, looks yummy, huh? So, as we said earlier, we don't really like to mess with the flavor of a grilled piece of fish. If you make sure it's fresh, you've won half the battle already. One should be careful not to serve very strong flavored accompaniments with the wrong fish, as it could be completely overshadowed. Mm, too true. Without getting too technical, we will advise when you should use a game fish, much stronger in flavor, like salmon, trout, or char, or a white fish. This is like hake or cod. So we're working with salmon tonight, and the first thing we're going to do is to preheat our oven. Now here's where it already gets a little tricky for us Americans because it's to 180 degrees Celsius. So let's uh, see what we can do for that. I just realized I used my phone to do all my <laughs> conversions and my phone is used. So does anybody know how many degrees 180 degrees Celsius is in Fahrenheit per chance otherwise I will guess that it's 350 because everything's 350 so I'm gonna go ahead and start it for 350 and if we find out we need a different temperature we can adjust it so now we're going to take a large pan I'm backwards too than I, than I usually am so this is a little confusing which way I move and we're going to take some bacon, 220 grams of bacon. Now let's see, we can figure, th oh, no, this is only in ounces. They don't give me the grams. Dag nibbit. Oh, there we go. Well, the serving size is 19 grams, which is two fried slices. Okay, 19 grams is two slices. It seems like it'll take about the whole pack of bacon to make 220 grams in that case. Okay. So let's see here. We can do 20. Yeah, this will definitely be the whole pack to get up to 220 grams. So we'll just take all that out and toss this. Rinse up. 
And now we're going to slice into lardens. I'm assuming lardens is basically small pieces. That's what it looks like in the picture. It's a word I'm not familiar with, but I think we can figure it out. That's a hefty amount of bacon for a, just one piece of fish. But that's what the recipe says, so that's what we'll do. Although, you know, I think we're gonna get a little fancy actually. I'm going to take this over to my kitchen scale and I'm going to weigh it out. So I'm going to take this off for now so I can weigh just the empty cutting board. Be right back. Okay, because on that scale I have grams and I think this will be much more accurate. I know it's a much more accurate way to cook. And I think I'm thinking about grams in the wrong way, so I want to make sure I don't make too much bacon. Okay, so indeed, when I weighed it out, it actually is about half the pack of bacon. So, good thing. And you can use bacon or pancetta, whichever you prefer or happen to have on hand. And we're going to saute this bacon in the butter. <laughs> it's another heart attack recipe. In 100 grams of butter. This is tough because my uh, scale is not over here. But I'm assuming that's not going to be a ton of butter because we're working with bacon here. Now one of the problems I always run into with bacon is that I cook it too hot or too fast. And I'm going to try not to do that. I usually like to cook in the microwave for that reason. I just do a much better job with it in the microwave but we'll see what we can do here. Adjust this a little bit. Okay, so I have it on actually quite low. I think I'll turn it up to kind of a medium low to melt the butter. Why you need butter to melt bacon in, to cook bacon in, is beyond me. But that's what the recipe says. Okay. I'm going to pump it up to about a medium. broken up into pieces a bit more. As you can tell, the pan is not hot yet. But it's getting there. So 
a race against time. Always exciting. Never a dull moment. Starting to hear sizzles. Alright, we've done it. I'm going to go rinse off my hand. And now, while we are cooking this bacon, we'll get this nice and crispy, but we can prepare our lemon. All right. So we're going to use lemon zest and lemon juice. So we're going to want to zest it first. I got a new lemon today just for this purpose because I have another lemon, but it's getting a little softer and it's so much harder to zest a softer lemon. A nice firm lemon is much easier to zest. So when we zest with a zester, we're removing just the peel and none of the pith because the pith is what makes it bitter and the zest is what makes it zesty. So we'll put that to the side, give our bacon a little shiftiness. I am using a large pan to cook the bacon just so I can spread it out nicely and cook it all fairly evenly. pan's getting a little hot. I'm going to turn it down just a little because I am a little paranoid about burning my bacon. Learned from past experiences. And we can get this juice the lemon. Which, let's see. I like to use my little hand juicer. That I have here. It was actually my grandmother's. And I'll use that since we have such a small amount of lemon to juice. No need to sully a big juicer. And I actually don't even have a big juicer. This suits me just fine. It's very convenient. Okay, so we're browning this bacon until it just begins to crisp. We're not 
quite there yet. Okay, so now we have our juice of one lemon that we can put aside. And we can also prepare the secret ingredient, which is, of course, wine. So this actually takes one cup of white wine. I'm just a little shy of having a cup of white. I'm going to attempt to mix it with a little rosé. I don't know. Is that a bad idea? Let me see. Maybe. I think I'll just stick with the, uh, the almost cup of white wine. Rosé is Seems just a little too strong in my opinion. White wine has that nice light flavor. All right, I think I'll flip some of this bacon a bit. Get it crispy on the other side. Careful when you flip to not have grease fly up. This bacon is extremely greasy. And we're definitely starting to brown some, so we do want to be ready for our next step, which is going to be adding cherry tomatoes, and we need 200 grams of cherry tomatoes. Now, luckily, these do have grams on them, so this whole thing is 283 grams. So, it won't be exactly precise, but we'll just get rid of a few of these. And we'll say that that's our 200 grams. Let's see how we're doing here. Now it also doesn't say to remove any of this bacon grease. So we're going to leave that there. We're, we're following this recipe to a T. So it says in a large pan, saute the bacon in the butter until it begins to crisp. Add the cherry tomatoes and lemon zest and crank the heat up onto high so they color a bit. Okay, so I think we're ready. Let's uh, add these cherry tomatoes and lemon zest and crank it up. Yes, ooh, it's pretty. Always important. And okay, we're cranking it up. We just cranked it up. Ooh, watch the spitting. Now, I'm not sure exactly what it means by color of this, but I assume it means get a little, little cook. So I'm going to let it do that. I have it up quite high. Not all the way full, but almost. I mean, you can definitely see we got a big sizzle going. Okay, I think we're right about where we want to be here. And now we're going to add our lemon juice and the white wine. So I think I'll do lemon juice first. And now let's add our white 
Now we want to cook this until it reduces by about half. So we're going to let this reduce down by about half. So now I have it on about medium. Well, it reduces. It doesn't say what to turn it down to. So I'm assuming you want to turn it down some. And while we're doing that, we can do your tiny bit of cleanup. And we can prep our pan that we're going to put the fish in. Now, I remembered I had this really beautiful pan that totally looks like a fish pan. It was also my grandmother's. And so I decided I'm going to try using this. Now let's see. Da, 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 da. Spoon the mixture from the. Actually, I don't. I think I might take that back. I don't know if the sides are high enough. I don't want to lose that moisture. But you do need something. Let's look at our piece of fish. This might help us determine what pan would be best to use. Maybe. I don't know. Should I try it? Should I not? What do you think? Too risky. We we'll live for danger. Well, our piece of fish is not terribly large. There's our piece of fish. So it's more wide than long, like some pieces of fish are. Eh, why don't we go for it? What have we got to lose? I've been wanting to use it, and it's a great excuse. So, let's move this over to the side, and now we want to oil the pan that the fish is going to cook in. So I'm going to take some olive oil for that. And give it a nice drizzle here. Spread that around some. Okay, so we have a nice oil coating on the bottom here for our piece of fish. Now, we're still reducing over here. Let's see how that's going. Looking pretty good. I think we need just a little bit more reduction. I'm going to turn it up ever so slightly. Ever so. Excited to eat this. Waiting for it to just reduce a, a little bit more. We can get out a big handful of basil or basil, depending on where you're from and what you say. So let's see, a big handful. I like basil so. I think I use it interchangeably, honestly. And so we're going to prepare to add a big handful of torn basil while s and stir while removing from the heat. Okay. I think we've reduced nicely here, so I am going to add the handful. or by torn, maybe they meant you can uh, loosely chop it, maybe not actually tear it, but we're hands on. Or you know what I bet would be great is if you have those shears and you shear it up.
Okay, now we're going to remove it from the heat. Looks great. We will put our piece of fish. Now it says skin on, bones out. Okay, good thing. That's what we have here. Place the fish in a well-greased oven dish and spoon the mixture from the pan evenly over it. So we're going to... Oh, see, it looks so good. It looks so nice in the pan. I think we'll be fine, too, actually. And now let's grab a spoon. Mix our hands. So I grabbed a plastic spoon because we're working with non-stick over here. And I'm going to move this guy nice and close because I don't want to lose a drop of this delicious looking sauce. So we're spooning this over the fish. Has anybody looked up how much the 180 degrees Celsius is by any chance? And now, this is where the book gets a little funny again. It says to bang the tray in the oven for about 20 minutes and then check the fish. You can tell if it is cooked by using a fork in the thickest part of the filet to pull the meat to one side. If it flakes away nicely and is still moist, you're on the money. Note. When cooking fish, there are two schools of thought. Cook it fast and hot and get lots of color, but risk overcooking it. Or cook it slowly on a low temperature and guarantee a perfect melt in the mouth sensation. Mm. Oh, see, haha, -ha. that's a little helpful. Some fancy restaurants cook fish at 70 degrees Celsius, which is 158 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so I think at about 350 we are right on the money for 180 degrees Celsius or close enough. So we're going to bang this tray in the oven and cook it for 20 minutes. Oh, and it didn't care. I just have to show it off before I put it in. Look how beautiful it is. Oh, doesn't that look so good? And the pan works perfectly. I'm so excited. Okay. Banging it in the oven. Bang. All right. Now, put this to the side. And what I wanted to do now is to cook a little side dish. And do a quick tidy. A little housekeeping. Okay. And. So I got this Israeli couscous the other day from the store. It's a porcini mushroom couscous. And I thought that might be nice for the side. I've been craving couscous and sure, why not? I mean, it seems like it'll be great. So simply add water, cook and serve. So we're going to bring one and a quarter cups water and one tablespoon of olive oil to a boil. we have, we can just go ahead and use the same 
measuring cup that we use for the wine. Still has a little odor in it, no problem. And let's see, one and a quarter cup of water. Okay, and you do want to bring that to a boil prior to putting in the couscous. So we'll put that in. And it says that the one tablespoon of olive oil is optional. It seems like kind of a, a whopping amount of olive oil, so I'm not going to put that much, but we'll put a little on. And now we'll crank this up and wait for that to boil. Now we will want to get a cover for our pot. waiting for it to boil, make it go faster. And we'll give that a minute. Put away the extra bacon. And this extra bacon will be perfect to use for another recipe. So I'm going to put it in the freezer. And for the past few days here on Martha's Vineyard, it's been very, very cold not even above freezing. So this is a nice, warm, satisfying dish to have on a cold night. Let's see today's date. I always like to write on the bags. Because you think you know what something is in the freezer, but then it gets frozen and you're stumped. Always good to write on. Looks like we're doing pretty well here, waiting for our boil. And then you can also think about what vegetable you would like to have on the side here. I think I'll be having spinach because that's what my children love to eat. So <laughs> every night spinach. Could be worse. I like spinach. Getting close. Let me get a spurtle for stirring. And we can open this up. It's known in Israel as petitim. Israeli couscous is made of wheat flour and roasted in an oven. Israeli couscous retains its shape and delectably chewy texture when cooked. This is blended with the delightfully woodsy flavor of porcini mushrooms. Enjoy it as an accompaniment to meat and seafood or eat alone as a satisfying and hearty entree. Mm -hmm. So this is exactly what I wanted. I'm super excited. <laughs> so you can see this Israeli couscous is the big pearl couscous. And it cooks so quickly. Now, lest us not forget about our precious fish here in the oven. I would say it's been in there maybe about five minutes. So I'm going to put my timer on for that for 15 minutes. And we 
are boiling here, so let's stir in our couscous. Bring it to a boil again. While you're doing this, you could prepare your serving dish. And let's see something for the couscous. Now I can see that it is boiling in there again. So I'm going to turn it down, all the way down to low, and simmer it for 10 minutes. So that is it. When it all is ready, I will post in the comments how it turned out with a picture and let you know about the taste test. And I thank you very much for joining me today. Have a great rest of your weekend and join me next week, same time. Bye.